world history in our time. So take heart. Uh, realize that many things are possible, even though the outlook may be bleak, even though the forces may be modest and the means are seemingly inadequate. Much can be done, uh, and we have to become accustomed to doing much with little. But now, we cannot, of course, trust the Obama White House. If this was Susan Rice, you can see, again, I pronounce her name with a shudder. Um, we can't trust these people to do anything. Also because their idea of it is to uh, ob oblige the Turkish government to carry this out. That will not do. You're going to have to work with the Kurds. You're going to have to massively arm the Kurds. You're going to have to give them air support. And on the other side, hopefully, Russia will see her way clear to supporting the Syrian Arab army in cutting that same corridor. Because I must say, the fact that the corridor remains open is an argument for the fact that neither the Syrian-Russian side nor the U.S. coalition and Kurdish side, neither one has done what is necessary. So I'm here as nobody's groupie to say to Moscow and to Washington, get busy on the Jarablus corridor. There's no reason for waiting. How many weeks and months have to go by? How many useless dead? And if you're Germany, I would also call on you saying, if you want to solve your refugee problem, well then, close the Jarablus corridor and the uh, problem, this huge wave of immigration with all the social dislocations and overwhelming of the humanitarian facilities that has been going on, that will be cut down to size. That will become manageable. And this is the most humanitarian thing we can do, because it is from ISIS that these people are running. As long as it was, uh, you know, these other groups, the huge refugee wave did not materialize. It is ISIS and their extreme mass murder genocide policies. That's what people are actually running from. Now, the, uh, the thing that I've just said, the Thursday afternoon briefing, again, catalyzed by us, energized by us, uh, had been preceded by some other leaks. And we'll get to those in just a second when we return on World Crisis Radio. To World Crisis Radio, Webster Tarpley here in Washington, D.C. The critical moment was Thursday afternoon when some high White House official, administration official, came out and addressed pretty much the entire White House press corps. I know I've been in these things. I can remember getting such a briefing off the record, say, during the uh, Reagan administration uh, from the, the uh, then director of the National uh, Security Council. Uh, so you're not allowed to say who it is, but I can I can speculate who it is. Right? We we're free to do that. The key idea, chief among the locations that will be hit with air attacks and pending ground assaults because of their strategic value to the Islamic State, Daesh. Chief among these is the last remaining 60 miles of Islamic State controlled territory along the Turkish border in northwest Syria. Okay. So that's what we heard on Thursday afternoon. Now, um, several days earlier, we got a, uh, a, a precursor of this, right? The ground was being prepared right, with a ballon d'essai, a trial balloon. And here we, here we read the following. Uh, this is based on material in the Wall Street Journal. The United States has urged Turkey to close a stretch of its border running 100 kilometers alongside Syria, comma, which has been used extensively by the Islamic State, ISIS, Daesh, to move its foreign fighters in and out of the war-torn country. And of course, all logistics, things like food, ammunition, spare parts, gasoline, all this stuff, other specialty products. The army travels on its stomach. Never forget it. Napoleon was right. So it has been estimated that around 30,000 Turkish troops would be required to shut down that stretch of border. Well, that's easy. Turkey, last time I looked and I visited the defense minister, Yavuz Turk, in his fortified office back in, uh, what was it, 1987, 1988. Turkey has about 500,000 troops. It's one of the largest armies in the world. 
So they can easily spare 30,000 to shut down. Essentially, it means to, to suppress smuggling. Now, back to this quote. This, uh, this is now a leak from a, uh, a U.S. official. Quote, the game has changed. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. The border needs to be sealed. A senior government, a senior U.S. government official told the Wall Street Journal. The, now, quote again, this is an international threat, and it's all coming out of Syria, and it's coming through Turkish territory. Close quote. The U.S. wants the border between the western Turkish town of Kilis and the eastern Syrian town of Jarablus closed. This is another way to define the two uh, extremities of the corridor. It also wants Ankara to keep a close watch on the border between Jarablus and Kobane. They spell Kobane in a different way, but it's Kobane. From where the IS sends most of its weapons and foreign fighters into Syria. Well, of course, uh, that's what the Kurds have been doing. That's why the Kurds fought for Kobane, and that is why they also fought for um, Tel Abyad, I think it was, during the summer. And that set up the current situation. It was when that situation materialized that Erdogan sprang into action to try to muddy the waters and save ISIS, which is his baby, or it's Petraeus's baby, but Erdogan is the uh, the governess, I guess. According to the London Independent, and this is this is stuff that people here have been hearing for years now. Turkey has been criticized for its long-term tolerance of and possible complicity with terror groups such as Jabhat al-Nusra Front and Ahrar al-Sham, Sham meaning Syria. Moreover, it is reported that Turkey is allowing IS, ISIL, ISIS, Daesh, to sell crude oil from its captured oil field in Syria, giving the group much needed revenue to finance its worldwide terror operations. Even on NPR Diane Rehm this morning, the representative of the Financial Times, with his distinctive oily voice, you can't miss him, he's sort of the Everett Dirksen school of uh, rhetoric, uh, he was saying, well, the Russians are making these accusations, and of course, there is something to it that, yeah, there, there is some pretty good evidence that this is what is going on. All right. So you can see this this quote here, the earlier one, uh, is, is even more specific, right? The 100 kilometers, and they're telling you exactly where, from Kilis in Turkey to Jarablus uh, on the Euphrates, I guess on the, uh, on the Syrian side. So uh, the pressure is mounting. Now, of course, uh, as I said, there, there are follow-up measures that have to be taken, right? We have been asking for a long time for Ashton Carter to be fired. I'll give you more reasons for that uh, in a minute, right? We successfully got rid of ISIS star John Allen. We've now got to push this Dr. Strangelove, Ashton Carter, the pedantic utopian uh, lunatic out of the way, um, because also because of his provocations in the past couple of days. Obama needs to issue, to issue an ultimatum. It can be private, that's okay but he's got to do it. Issue an ultimatum to Turkey saying, your support, your collusion, your logistical services, your supply line services to Daesh, ISIS, is intolerable. And therefore, you've got to cease and desist. And if you don't do that, we are going to take measures of our own and don't get in our way, right? The Turks love to put out these these things where they say, oh, you can't, nobody tells us what to do when it turns out to be our border, right? We don't ask anybody's permission when it comes to supporting terrorism in northern Syria. I'm sorry, this must end. Uh, if you want to do something uh, elegantly, as I said before, Obama could say, I'm also uh, putting economic sanctions on Turkey. I would say at that point, um, Erdogan would be overthrown by a military coup in about 24 to 48 hours, and all the better for it. Let's not fetishize formal democracy. We can see that Erdogan puts all the journalists in jail. He runs vote fraud. He does all this stuff. That's no democracy. That's a that's a sham. So let's not be uh, be f be fooled and duped by that. Um, the other question then is, what should we do? 
I call upon all persons of goodwill to and worldwide. I call upon all persons of goodwill worldwide to join the Tax Wall Street Party in our mobilization to get this policy implemented and implemented whether Erdogan likes it or not. And he's not going to like it. So we better get ready to implement it, knowing that Erdogan will try to sabotage it at every turn. There's a point where the weakness and fecklessness of Obama become a national menace. Obama needs to be criticized, not because he has said no to military adventures. We welcome Obama's rejection of military adventures coming from neo, neocon fascist madman, neocon fascist generals, Petraeus and Allen. But uh, this weakness in regard to somebody like Erdogan, it's now time for this to end. Now, if it doesn't, let's let's also let's look at this. Um, on the one side, supposing we get uh, what we're asking for, uh, one effect of closing the Jarablus corridor is you would essentially bag, you would pocket a large part of the jihadis in the world. In other words, uh, this. Patsy Milieu, this group of foreign fighters, mercenaries, Freikorps, right, militias, uh, people like this, they started off back in Afghanistan in the 80s, a lot of them. Um, they were deployed in various places in the 90s. And of course, they, they fought in Libya, and then they were shipped by the U.S. into Turkey. They could be pocketed, and at that point, maybe that would be the end of it for a lot of them. Uh, maybe that's what they would want. But that would then mean that the number of terrorists in the world would be radically reduced. Back in a minute. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Webster Topley here in Washington, D.C. We have to push ahead. We have a very full uh, program. Now, uh, assuming that uh, what we want is not done, we can also see where this is headed. The United States is going to pay a terrible price for the treachery of ISIS czar Allen, Dr. Strangelove Ashton Carter, and the rest of these people, all the way down to Colonel Steve, what's his name over there, um, the spokesperson, Colonel Steve Watson, you have to remember him. Uh, they're all lying and uh, obfuscating and covering up, and this is the, uh, this we have to assume is the Petraeus Allen uh, network, right? The 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 coterie camarilla of insubordinate uh, generals who who fight Obama tooth and nail because right? they want him they they want him to be an aggressor they also want everything to fail they want the air campaign to fail they want everything to fail so that they can get the 200,000 troops which is actually what they've always wanted now this woman, Liz Sly, right, Middle East co correspondent for the Washington Post, did a very interesting piece. And this is how the U.S. is seen in Iraq, now Iraq, uh, in, in regard to ISIS. Uh, and here we read from Baiji, Iraq. On the front lines of the battle against the Islamic State, suspicion of the United States runs deep. Iraqi fighters say they have all seen the videos purporting purporting to show U.S. helicopters airdropping weapons to the militants, and many claim they have friends and relatives who have witnessed similar instances of collusion. Ordinary people have seen the videos, heard the stories, reached the same conclusion. It might seem absurd to Americans, well, not to this American, but it is widely believed among Iraqis that the United States is supporting the Islamic State for a variety of pernicious reasons that have to do with asserting U.S. control over Iraq, the wider Middle East, and perhaps the oil. There is no doubt, says a, uh, a Shiite militia commander, right? The, and he, the, interesting what he says. The Shiite commander says, the Islamic State is, quote, almost finished. They are weak. If only America would stop supporting them, we could defeat them in days. End of the quote. How about that? Listen to Allen. Listen to Petraeus. Listen to Ashton Carter, right? Oh, it's going to take 20 years. Oh, it's going to take five years here. They're 20 feet tall. I think Obama tried to refute that about the 20 feet tall. They have magical powers. But here's a guy on the ground who's been fighting them, the Shiite, and he says, look, they're almost finished. If we could cut the U.S. support, they'd be done. So um, elsewhere in this article... 
we read uh, 